Torah tells us in our portion uh, that it says in the Torah, in chapter 7, verse 21, so if you have an uh, which is a pottery utensil and somehow the pottery utensil had something of a sacred offering which had expired that if it has this food of the sacred offering in it then since once the food went beyond the time where it was allowed to be in then that food became what's called nosar, expired food and then it needs to be burnt, but it's the food was absorbed within the taste of the pot. So this is a pottery utensil. And then what you have to do is you shove or you do, need to break it. But if it would be a copper utensil, then it then between the choshet bushawa, but if it was cooked in a pot in a in a copper utensil, then it can be washed in boiling water. Excuse me, morak for it can be washed in boiling water. Now this is the idea this is relevant to our holiday of Pesach because, by the way, it used to be that the if you ever watched the Ethiopian community before Pesach, they would break all their pottery dishes because they were of the opinion that you couldn't kosher, that it was like this verse is saying, and you need to break the pottery utensils. But we're of the opinion, the Talmudic Jews are of the opinion that the pottery doesn't need to be broken, the absorbed chametz in the in the pottery doesn't need to be broken you just can't use it on Pesach but in any event you're allowed to kosher the utensils if they're metal but you can't kosher a utensil if it's china or pottery so you can kosher your mugs if you use your mugs for let's say barley soup for hot barley soup and now it comes on Pesach you say I want to use my mug on Pesach you can't do it you can't do it so this is what Rabbi Salvechik says says Rabbi Salvechik it's not coincidental that that the festival of Pesach always follows the reading of Tzav. So this week is Shabbos Agado, and it always, Shabbos Agado is always going to be Parsha Tzav. He says that's not coincidental. So the reading of the specific Torah portions in connection with specific holidays dates back to Moshe Rabbeinu. This is based upon Megillah 31b. Even though there are certain passages which need to be read at certain times, even though they used to finish the Torah every three years, and now we finish it every year. Where the, when the, they instituted the Torah, they had certain benchmarks that you need to hit a certain portion prior to a certain another portion, and that was one of them. That Sav is always read before Pesach, but Midbar is always read before Shavuos, but Eschanan is always the Shabbos after Tishavah, and and Nitzavim is always the Shabbos before Rosh Hashanah. Now, the reason why we always read Sav before Pesach is because we have this concept of beer chametz, cleansing one's home and the utensils of leaven. So basically we have to get rid of the chametz from our home. So the Torah is telling us there are two passages in the Torah where we learn about how we kosher utensils. One is in Parshat Sav and the other is in Parshat Matos so when they come back from defeating the Midianites in battle. These are the two passages in the Torah where we learn about how we kosher utensils. Parshat Sav sets forth the laws of koshering the meat utensils that have absorbed the taste of the sacrifices. And so therefore, the, this, is this, this verse is the source for the laws of koshering our utensils before Pesach. This seemingly esoteric verse in the middle of a portion about sacrifices is the basis for how we know which, law, which utensils we can kosher. <laughs> And so basically Rabbi Salvechik says what I say here, what I had said. He said in the temple, there was a sin offering and the sin offering had to be eaten with one day and two nights. And so after that one day and two nights, the meat had expired and needed to be destroyed. And so therefore, after that time period, it becomes no, sir. It becomes, it becomes uh, forbidden. And so if it's a pottery utensil, it needs to be broken. You can't use it again. But if it is a metal utensil, you immerse it in boiling water and it's permitted. So the Maimonides distinguishes uh, between an ordinary utensil, which is to be used on everyday service, and utensil for Passover. And an ordinary utensil requires only hagoa, placing the item in boiling water in order for you to use it again. However, when you want to clean it for Pesach, just putting in 
boiling water is not enough. What you also need to do is you also have to rinse it with cold water. This is a process which we don't really require anymore. Although the custom is after you immerse it in boiling water, you're also supposed to rinse it off in cold water. Maimonides calls this shatifa. Tosfos say that this shatifa is not necessary. We still have a practice after you immerse it to rinse it with cold water. Only in the base of Mikdash was it actually required. So, so basically, Tosfos is stating that, that, that we're, we're not required to mimic exactly like the temple, but Maimonides is requiring us when we prepare for Pasach to use the exact method that they use in the temple and do this extra procedure. So, uh, so basically, the Maimonides was trying to mimic the procedure of the temple. And so that's why we read this passage of Tzav, says Rabbi Salvechik, before before we do the service before Pesach, in order for us to, uh, in order for us to model how we are going to kosher our utensils for Pesach use. And so this is one of the, this is the source for it. So that's the source for it. Everything is based upon that. That's what Rabbi Salvechik says. Anybody have any questions about that? So if anybody has any questions about koshering utensils, we could also address those today. Okay.